Hello. What's up? I hope y'all are doing well. Okay, that looks a little bit better. It's amazing how much difference there is from full blast down to like midway. I'm slowly learning. I'm slowly, slowly, slowly learning. Yep. Slowly learning what settings are best and which ones are not. There's that. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's amazing how important lighting is, of all things. It's one of those things I've never thought about. Lighting's important. Um, hey, Bethany. Hope you're doing well. How you doing? Um, it's August 12th. Y'all, I'm burning up. It's like my new, like, opening line. I'm burning up. Anyways, um, August 12th. Hope y'all doing good. Um, we had significant weather last night, or actually here at the house, we did not have significant weather. It was weird. We had this like storm run through like really, really quick. We had like pea-sized hail, which is pretty typical for Montana. And um, I mean, it was in and out a couple minutes or whatever. I mean, we sat out and I mean, we looked outside the window and we watched little pieces of pea hail um, bounce off the sidewalk, whatever. Then the husband's phone started blowing up and um, to find out a mile down the road or so they um <laughs> they had golf ball size apple size softball sized hail they had major flooding they had um wind come through knock down trees cave in roofs all of that kind of stuff so he had to go into work last night to help them um do breaking news and all that kind of stuff but it's amazing the difference of us being right here and everything looking cool and calm and you know fine and then a mile down the road you know catastrophe or whatever but um they're still debating whether or not a cloud they saw not a cloud i guess um there's a debate whether or not there's a tornado here or not yeah it looks like it but um the meteorologist said that it looks like a tornado but there was no rotation so it wasn't tornado we'll see one of those things I didn't think I'd have to think about here. It's um, cooler here. It was hot last week, but because these storms that rolled through, um, we were in like the mid to high 90s, and that's dropped us. And this storm that came through yesterday, we're like low to mid 80s right now. We're supposed to get back up to 90s or whatever. Um, other drama or whatever. The husband took the car last week for an oil change. Everything was fine up until that point. And then all of a sudden, the old chains are telling him he's got a bad sensory or bad transmission range. He's got a transmission pan leak. He's got a differential leak. He's got a bad differential. Then there was something else. I don't. We don't have. We don't have any leaks on our garage floor except for one that started after the oil change which leads me to believe something's kind of weird there but um yeah we're gonna take it for a second opinion because um we know we need a new vehicle but yeah we just don't want to suck it up and get a new vehicle <laughs> so yeah anybody wanna if i started go fund me y'all wanna um donate to it because um I'm currently looking up part-time jobs because with the dog's expenses, us possibly having to pay HOA fees, and then um, possibly buying two cars because we'll get one to replace the one we got, and then if I get a part-time job, I'll need to get to and from it. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna cry because the anxiety is just like, or whatever. So if you got like a random couple thousand laying around, you wanna send it my way, I won't decline it. <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs> Love y'all so much. Okay, anyway, we got a ton, I got a ton, ton to ton to talk to. I mean, my notes, I didn't even have room to write all my notes on one paper. That's kind of my, like my gauge. If I can put it all on one sheet of paper, it's good. I barely was able to do that, so let's see if I can run through this. So nice martini, the orange chini. Um, two parts orange vodka, one part, ugh, one part triple sec, 
one part cranberry juice and a splash of lime. So there you go. So now I'm going to make it that way so we can um, keep it moving. Because like I said, a billion things to talk about. Um, I don't know if y'all have noticed, I have to have things laid out a certain way every single time. Hmm. I have two parts orange vodka. So one. So, I mean, the husband has been pulling like some crazy. He's been doing 70, 80 hours in one week, past couple of weeks, due to an event they're doing. So, um, besides us stressing over vehicle and going grocery shopping, um, we didn't do much else this weekend. I'm hoping this week is better for him, but sadly, when you're the boss, it doesn't lighten up that often. There you go. One part cranberry juice, splash of lime. What's well, nice though, I mean, with it, I mean, yeah, it's miserably hot there and everything, but with it being mid August, you know, in another month, fingers crossed, Tim's will start going down. Hopefully. <laughs> Usually it wasn't until October in Alabama where it was like, oh, okay, hey, it's fall. But um, either way. Orange teeny. Let's see how this goes. You know, don't think about orange teeny having cranberry juice. I think that's a spot on my... I must have, like, dripped something on my... No, that's an icon. Never mind. It looks like a water splash on the screen. It's not. Okay, let's try this real quick. So I can keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it going. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think I splashed too much lime, but it's pretty good. Yep, I do this one again. Okay, good. Hey, okay, like I said, tonight we are talking tips for teachers. I know probably the majority of um, whoever watches this is not a teacher but some of these things you can actually um implement i mean depending on your job and or what you do at home or whatever you kind of implement at home if you have children you can do it anyway all right like i said tips for teachers nothing mind-blowing stuff to just make the day easier make school year easier um little life hacks tips or whatever all right i've shared this one before do-it-yourself whiteboards and I've got a billion supplies over here, and no matter which way I try to organize it, I could not find a good way to do it. So, patience. <laughs> All right, do-it-yourself whiteboards. Really quick, really simple. Get a sheet pr protector. Sheet protector. That's it. Throw a piece. Um, you can do lined paper, blank paper, your worksheets, whatever. Just like that. Use a sponge to wipe off whatever you write, simple as that. Your um, dry erase markers, put a strip of Velcro on one side and put it onto your um, dry erase board up on the wall, um, pointed down, that way so the ink goes down. Dries out, um, it takes a lot longer for it to dry out. For kids, or for yourself I guess, take a pom-pom, you can hot glue it to one end, glue it to in one end, whatever, then you have a, a built-in Eraser. Simple as that. Um, okay, like I said, I've got a billion. Whoop, just a second. I want a bucket to throw this stuff in as I talk. Okay. Glue and paint. As a preschool teacher, I hated doing activities. Glue and paint. Because you're supposed to allow the kids to be able to do it by themselves. Which means glue and paint everywhere. So, here we go. Grab a container, whatever kind. Throw a sponge in there. Throw your glue in there on top, it's going to um, soak into the sponge. Then they can take their paint brushes and dip it onto the sponge. It's picking up less paint, less mess. That means you also have less mess around the table. Um, do the same thing with glue, um, less used. Um, I don't have one. A Starbucks cup. You got the cup with the domed lid. Put the paint in the bottom. You can put your paint brushes in so it will hold the paint brushes and they can dip um, in and get the paint, pull it out. It'll hold everything in place, keep it contained. That's the biggest thing, keep it contained. 
Um, next one, this is ours from our bathroom, but you can go to the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, Walmart, Walmart's got them for like 98 cents, or whatever, toothbrush holder. Get the cheap plastic ones that have the um, hole on the bottom that plugs up any kind of water or anything to keep it from draining. Um, again, paintbrush holder. If they're using it, you can put um, water in it. Then they can put their paintbrushes in there like that. When you're done, take the plug out, drain it, rinse it out, you're done. Toothbrush holder. I mean, Dollar Tree's got them. Just like that. Um, I got a billion notes, like I said. Um, cookie sheets. My classroom was limited on space. This is one of those things I wish I had known when I taught. Um, cookie sheets. When they're doing art and it's like paint and you can't lay something on top of each other, you can get these cookie sheets. Sometimes they're in packs of two for a buck. They're super cheap. I don't cook with them because of how cheap they are. I mean, you can. I've done it before, but either way. Lay a piece of artwork there. Stack it on top. Piece of artwork, stack. They stack really easily. Keeps art from um, sticking together and they can dry really well with only taking up a tiny little bit of space. Other idea, if you've got an activity that takes a ton of um, pieces, like dice, little um, bingo dots, whatever. Each child can have their own. In fact, think about that with art. Put child's name across the back or across the top up here so every child has their own to use throughout the year. So when you're stacking up art, you know where the child's art is. Or when you're doing an activity, just like that. Either way, game activity pieces, whatever, keeps it contained and from spreading out and lost. Super simple, quick, easy. Um, if you are teaching children how to write or you have a child that um, struggles with writing, um, any kind of little, I've just got a pom-pom, little, I think I call them koosh balls, whatever, um, have them put it in their hand and grasp their hand, the hand like that. Then, they can lay the pencil on top of what they're grasping. That way so they can lay it on the, you know, properly in their hand. That way so they learn how to write easily. It's one of those things, I mean, a little trick. Again, one of the things I wish I knew. Oh, I need that pencil back. Okay. I went to Walmart this weekend looking for this. And, of course, I couldn't find them because I needed it. Do y'all know those great big thick milkshake straws? It's not the regular straws, the great big thick ones uh, or wide ones. They have bigger holes or whatever. I couldn't find any, so I had to make something just to show what I'm talking about. All right, if you can find those big thick milkshake straws, put one on the top part of their desk and tape it down. You can get all sorts of pretty duct tape and all that kind of stuff, tape it down. Because pencils most of the time roll off desk, they go missing, whatever. If you have that tape on the desk, when children are done using their pencil, they can just slide it right there. They can go outside to play, leave for the day, whatever. When they come in the next day, their pencil is still there. It hasn't rolled off, gone away, whatever. Um, next up, any kind of um, game pieces, specifically dice, grab a small clear container and put your dice in there. When you go to play a game, don't even take them out. Shake them up, and it's a six and a two. You see it, you don't even have to open it, whatever. I mean, they've got these little thingies too. That way so you don't lose dice. I mean, something like that, oops. Um, make these pencil pouch for each child. Um, pencil pouches, you can get, of course, like I said, a buck a piece at um, Walmart, Dollar Tree, whatever. For teachers, because this is something that I actually had to do in my classroom, is I had to keep um, information for each of my children in my classroom. You know, um, allergy, emergencies, um, any kind of specifics, whatever. Um, do a pencil pounce for each child. You can put that important information in there. You can, um, if the parents send extra supplies, instead of giving them all to the kids, put the extra supplies in their pouch. Um, small pieces to games, puzzles. If you do a lot of bulletin boards, store um, letters, um, pieces, whatever. Pencil pouches are, I mean, look at them. They're thin, so you can stack them side by side. You can stack them up and down. Super easy storage. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. This one, I wish, again, I had known. Um, if, 
I know that there's a lot of schools that don't want you um, taping into walls or um, nailing into walls or stapling or whatever. They want to use that weird putty stuff or whatever that leaves that weird oil spot or whatever oil spot. Um, this is a hack that is awesome. Um, take a strip of painter's tape, put it on the wall. Then get your hot glue gun. Put hot glue across the strip, throw your poster on there. You hung it up, you're not causing damage to the wall, and if it's a laminated poster, when you take it down, you can just peel the hot glue off of the laminated poster. You peel the tape off the wall, no damage, no problem. Just like that. Um, talking about bulletin boards. This is another one of those things. I used, tape, I used plastic tablecloths for everything in my classroom. If I was going to do an under the sea type thing, I would cut strips up and hang it from the ceiling. I stuffed them and made apples and pumpkins. I used plastic tablecloths for everything. Never once did I think about doing this. When I'm doing a bulletin board, instead of those rolls of craft paper and having to line it up straight and have it look all pretty and everything, just grab a plastic tablecloth. You can get them at Dollar Tree. A lot of times a pack of two for a buck. You get them in all colors. Anyways, plastic tablecloth. Put it, staple it up onto your wall. You're done. That's it. Now, it's plastic. So it's not something that if it's an activity or something the kids are going back and forth and it's constantly being um, pinned, you know, used or whatever because it will um, not last that long. It's plastic. Um, but if it's something that's just going to go up there and stay and no one's going to mess with it or whatever, it's perfect. Um, plastic tablecloth. This one, again, if you're a weirdo like me and super type A and strive to be a perfectionist and you put the letters up on the board and they don't look straight or even or the way you want them, this is another hack. Take the letters that you're using, lay them out on the table in the way that you want them. Take a piece of clear tape. If you want, you can go actually put a piece, a small piece of like masking tape on the back or whatever. But take a piece of clear tape all the way across. That way so you can literally pick it up and put it where you want. There's no worrying about you having to pull staples out of the wall and resituate it or nothing. Just like that. If you put masking tape off the, um, on the um, back or whatever, you can peel the letters off or you can peel the tape off and you're done. Not these though because it peeled the, um, these are like letters from 1982. So they've been waiting to die. <laughs> yep, see, whatever. But most laminated letters, it will um, work fine with or whatever. Y'all get the idea. Um, let's see. Okay. This canister is not perfect. You can get the better canisters at Dollar Tree or whatever. They got the round ones, but and this is just crepe paper or whatever. But y'all know that border that people put around bulletin boards. So wrap a rubber band around it and stack it wherever you want or if you think it's going to um, get shifted around in your closet, drawer, whatever, get a canister, store it in a canister that was it's less likely to get damaged. You can easily stack it and store it without worrying and easy access. Um, all right, quick storage idea. Boxes. Y'all know those cube store. Oh, and I just dropped something over there on the other side. I'll go get in a minute. Um, that cube storage. You can find boxes that um, fit those cube spaces or whatever. Whatever your storage. You got bookshelf, pantry, whatever you got in your room. You can most of the time find boxes that fit that space. Boxes aren't pretty though. So if you want them to match your classroom decor or um, just look prettier than a box. You can take duct tape. They got every kind of duct tape in the world. Um, duct tape, cut the flaps off the top, cover in duct tape, contact paper, whatever. Paint them, spray paint them. Easy storage, cheap storage. My favorite boxes, go to the liquor store. 
they got those dividers that we sew. Um, I mean, they separate the bottles so they don't break. Those are super durable boxes. Um, uh, milk crates. Milk crates. This one's a little bit wider, longer than the typical milk crate. But milk crates, perfect for storage, used for cubbies for children. Um, they're stackable. You can easily stack one on top of each other. Um, flexible seating is a big, 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 big topic right now. That's seating other than sitting at a desk or a um, sitting in a desk in a chair. A lot of children don't learn that way. They're kids. They're supposed to um, be running around and burning energy and um, sitting other than, you know, just like this. So flexible sitting is being able to sit on a rug, sitting on, um, you know, on a pillow, bean bag, whatever. Flexible seating though, let's say you, you take a milk crate, you're using it for storage. Most of the time you can find a piece of wood, something, that you can cover in um, foam, cover in foam, and then take whatever kind of fabric you want and create a pillow and then fit, fit it right on top. That way, so when it's, um, you need some extra sitting, seating, sitting, <laughs> when you need some extra seating, this can be pulled out. The contents don't have to be removed. The top stays on it and they can sit on it. With it being a kid, it's not going to affect the milk crate. If I sat on it, it might be different. Either way though, perfect for flexible seating, um, storage, um, I shared this on Friday on the Facebook page, organizing paper. I did this in my classroom in a file cabinet. Take um, your file folders. I like to separate by color. I don't know if this one actually fit. It does. Okay. And you have storage for your paper. So you can easily reach in and grab what you want. Um, a shoe organizer, I've said that in the past, y'all know my love for shoe organizers, uses a mail center. You can easily put each child's name on a pocket. No problem there. That way, so you can drop mail, homework. They can come in and drop their um, assignments, their notes, whatever, into their pocket. Um, you can put extra supplies for each child. Shoe organizers are, I mean, you can be utilized for almost anything. Um, Something again I'd never thought of before. Um, when we separated, I would have children um, choose their areas to go play. I mean, we had the room area, or we had the room divided up into areas. So um, they would have to go choose their area. And the way that I kept track was I had clothespins with each child's name, and they would have to go and get their clothespin, and they'd have to go put it on the chart in that area, so I could keep track of where each child was. If I'd known this, it would have been a whole lot easier. Bracelets, hair ties, something. Something with a bunch of colors. Organize your, um, you can color code games, tables, groups. Let's say you have the red group, and that red group consists of six kids. So they would all wear the red tie on their, um, you know, wrist. So they would go to that area or that space, whatever. Bracelets, hair ties whatever rubber bands although rubber bands typically cause like you know yeah anyways you can color code and separate into groups a whole lot easier um like i said a second hold up i'm just gonna go okay i had some tap lights around here at one point i don't know where they went my go-to method when i needed children to be quiet was to whisper. If I whispered, they had to stop what they were doing to hear what I was saying. So whispering for me most of the time worked. But if you have um, a classroom where they're all kind of independently working and um, you just want to maintain the levels of the classroom, I came across this. All right, let's on the wall, pretend this piece of poster board is the wall. You could put um, great big stickers, whatever. Zero, one, two, three, four. Stick a tap light above each one. You can get a four pack of tap lights for four ninety eight at Walmart. Just saying. All right. Now, underneath zero, voice is off. One is whisper. Two is normal. Three is speak up. 
So typically you would probably want normal. So the tap light would be on normal. If they start getting too loud, go over and hit one, turn off two. If it's a time when they're testing or something like that, turn on zero, turn off the other one. So you can easily and hopefully, you know, maintain the voice um, control of your classroom by just, it's something you don't have to raise your voice. That's the big thing. You never want to raise your voice because as soon as you raise your voice, you come across as threatening or aggressive and it's a good way to lose contact with your children. Um, real quick, two more things. Two more things, yay. All right. If you, um, permanent marker, you're going through your room doing labels, anytime you're writing something onto an object, whatever, is more likely going to fade, it's going to rub off, something like that. Take some clear nail polish and just do a coat over whatever you write. That way so it will keep it from rubbing off and fading. One more thing, I don't, of course there's no picture where. Take advantage of Goodwill. Our Goodwill, we've got a couple of good Goodwills here that have loads of furniture, supplies, toys, games. If you are, um, if you are, if you've got a game where you are missing um, dice out of the game, Go to Goodwill. You can probably find a game there for like a buck. And if all you need is the dice, guess what? You pay a buck for some dice. Um, and you probably get some extra or whatever. But go take advantage of your Goodwill. Go and, I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of furniture at ours. You can, um, ours has tons of like office supplies, notepads. Um, I found a great big bag of highlighters. It had like a hundred highlighters in it for like two bucks. Um, I didn't need that. I only needed like five, but for two bucks, I bought the bag. I took 10 out, kept 10 for myself, and I sent the husband with the rest to work. Um, toys, games, books, take dress up clothes, take advantage of Goodwill. There. Woo! I surprised myself. Didn't expect to get through all those. <laughs> yep. Okay, so next week, um, we are going to continue talking about back to school tips. But this week was geared towards teachers. Next Monday um, is more towards parents getting their kids ready for um, back to school. So next Monday night we are talking to, um, or not talking to, y'all. I'm talking to y'all. Um, anyway, next week we are talking back to school tips, back to school um, hacks to help um, Getting into that back to school groove a little bit easier. Getting up in the mornings and going, getting home in the evenings and getting all of the stuff done. Um, you know, all of that rush and mess and chaos that goes on before and after school. Bringing a little bit of um, calmness to that or a little bit easier. So um, we're doing that next Monday. And we're doing the Amaretto Peach Martini. There you go. And I still got like a minute and 15 seconds left. <laughs> I impress myself sometimes, y'all. So, um, join me next Monday. Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. Like them, love them, share them, all that good stuff. Um, send me your thoughts and your ideas. Send me, remember that money for a couple new cars since that seems to be in our near future. <laughs> your ideas. If you are in Billings, and you have an incredibly awesome car deal for us. We would love you forever. I would proudly promote you and talk about you here on Facebook Live. <laughs> Whatever. Um, until then, though, I will see y'all next Monday. Have a good evening and good week, and I'll see y'all next Monday. Bye.